women's basketball game in the city of Portland ever. That's in incredible. Any capacity. That's incredible. No tournaments, no nothing. That all changes today. Stanford with the Cardinal uniforms. And right away, reappearing. Yeah, K Kiki Iriofen is, is a player who, just watching film already in this young season, has improved so much for Stanford. Another interior presence. Iriofen last year as a freshman only averaged about four points a game, is throwing in 10 points per game, more than that. And that is a terrific drive, but not a finish for Lindsay. And then off the glass. Jones with the drive. It's her own miss. Off glass this time. His daughter played with Cameron Brink. Won two state championships together. And then Cameron went to a different high school for her senior season. First scoring game so far. Jones left alone. Is 0 for 6 from 3. Didn't even look to take the 3, but got a better shot. Best shot on the floor comes from. Little shot clock now for the Pilots. Oh, we're getting it inside. There's Briggs. But a terrific move! Oh, after some good defense again by Kiki. Jones just made a little bit of a move to the coach. Vandenberg said that she's still trying to get the puzzle pieces in the right places with all of these players. When you think about what they lost, I mean, they lost three starters in the Hall Sisters. And Tara Vanderveer's challenge is finding the right rotations, not just who to play and win, but who plays well together. And being able to find that balance, being able to find that chemistry on the floor is something that they're going to utilize this preseason for throughout conference play as a terrific. Jones bringing the ball up. Working on Fowler, one of the Australians. Portland has not scored now in almost three minutes. Shot clock really skinny now. Inside, Prechtel. And, and ironic that they met last season in the NIT. Yeah. Portland losing to Scott Lewis, Oregon State Beavers. Oregon State going to be here next week for my tournaments. We'll be here. Some of those games being played right here in this building, the Child Center. Very often. Of course, averaging a little bit more in terms of minutes per game. But two ownership, right? Taking ownership over the summer of, of getting better on balance. She looks stronger. She looks confident. Portland breaks a drought that had gone almost five minutes. They missed 11 of 12 shots. You now with nine, and Coach Meek is going to sub in four players in that next opportunity. And it takes patience. I mean, we're talking about the number one overall recruit in Lauren Betts, who hasn't even gotten on the floor yet, right? So she's coming in, and she's playing behind a Cameron Brink. She's playing behind a Kiki often and she's hey. loving it. Her dad played basketball with Del Curry in Virginia Tech, and her mom was Del Curry's wife's group. That shot affected by Brink. Bruno had to make it a rainbow shot. Jones, one hand puts it in. In the interior, another Stanford turnover as Meek drove into the lane. Unselfish basketball by the Cardinal, but I think it's a testament to the way that Stanford runs their offense, right? As Cameron Brink gets another block, just efficient, getting their teammates the best shots on the floor. Brink over Cochran, getting them going. Is important. They were combined five for eight in this game from the floor. Fourth game in seven days for Stanford. And there's the freshman now in for Stanford. Hannah Jump, who is just a technically beautiful shot. And now we get a look 
at the freshman, Lauren Betts. There she is, the number one overall recruit. Look at the freshman body. Yeah. And I love that talking to uh, Coach Vanderveer as Betts got the rebound. She said that Lauren Betts is delightful. Yes, she she did. personality, very coachable, a sponge. Not complaining about not getting a lot of minutes. Wow. So shots are going to come from patient enough to wait until they get it there. Few open looks that Portland has gotten. I think he knocks it down. And Jones, there's some of the trapping that Portland's known for, but you saw Betts put up her hand down. Chop had it taken away. Good hustle there by Burnham, but it did not pay off for the Pirates. Haley Jones falling down! Got it to go. Did not see. Falling coming from behind and then Brown to go in the first half. That's good nice defense, pass. but a good pass away. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. That was a great look. And that's what Portland's going to have to do. They're going to have to find a way to force rotations where they can get open shots or get out in transition because the length of Stanford really causing them problems in the half court. Cochran. So, Coach Green talked about one of the dangers of, of playing a team in Stanford is just that they come at you in waves. And, and you look at, at, at teams who oftentimes when they go to their second unit sometimes have a dip. And Haley Jones. So far in this matchup, Portland known for its pressure, trying to do that right now. But the impressive true freshman point guard, the Polo, gets it over to break. What? Andrews returning from a knee injury that she suffered last season. And, you know, she's a stat stuffer and she's a leader for this pilot team. Break. Terrific. So remember two seasons ago, graduated Kiana Williams and just looked to kind of fill the gap a season ago. And now Apollo taking ownership of that position. And Kiana Williams, coach said Key was the key when she played, but got the lion's share of minutes at point. And now Apollo coming to campus. Hey, the Jones using the last girl. And Crawley getting it out. Meek with the miss. Vector with the rebound, and Meek almost forced the turnover, had a jump. Ohio State has been impressive. If they can stay consistent, I think they have a chance. And my dark horse, the Cyclones of Iowa State. I love that Ashley Jones came back. Of course, you, you think about players like Lexi Donarski, and, and that team has some pieces. If they get the right draw, they could be that dark horse. Very gritty team. Go family always doing a great job with them. Haley Jones is going their way, and Portland really struggling. The score indicates that. They've not hit a field goal here in this quarter. They knew it would be difficult, and it is proven to be that and more. Well, we heard Michael Meek talk to his team in the locker room before the game and talk about the controlling the controllables, how hard we play, playing together. Football's Top 25 rankings as we head towards the playoffs. That's on ESPN and the ESPN. And we're winning our third national championship a couple years ago. But just too much talent on this Stanford squad. Grand Believe, we just said she hadn't played yet. Here she is, number five. She of Dunk fan. Cochran with some of these reserves in the game. We'll see if the offense can click a little bit better, but believe you got a hand on it. Knockout into single digits. Fowler. 
And just a junior, she's about 350 points away from being the all-time leading scorer. So Alex Fowler, an elite player who has been in the Australian national team program, which is a, one of the strongest in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and incredibly consistent. I mean, she's just been consistent for this program. And there's Thor and Beth just talking about, like, a, a punch off the bench, right? Mm -hmm. You're not talking about one, two, maybe three players. You're talking about the waves of players that Tara Vanderveer can go to. And that in itself is a challenge. It's, it's a challenge because now you've seen maybe three different lineups, all these guys playing together. But what does it look like a game with Kiki Arioff? And, you know, what does it look like? Right. What would it look like if Betts and Brinks were in the game together, right? In terms of defensively, what would that look like? I mean, just finding different yeah. combinations that will help this Stanford team be its best come March. And a luxury certainly for Tara Vanderveer. But there's the first. Yeah, that, that's really cool that the folks at Jeopardy selected Haley Jones to do that. Ta Tara Vanderveer impressed, of course, with what Haley did. Burnham trying to get the ball away. But like Betts almost tipped that in. You know, Portland trying to come up with some positives. And fun to see. Continuing the legacy. It's been a while, and, and the matchup on Sunday against Stanford, the, the matchup of one and two. I mean, Stanford is a team that has the link. It's like early in the season in November, and then a potential matchup in March. Right. Good job by Bolivi to finish, running the floor well on that last run down the floor. South Carolina also with some tremendous depth for Don Staley. One, two, nothing better than that. Pam, I'm really excited about this matchup. And you think about core, a nucleus, and you lose Destiny Henderson to the WNBA draft, but you're bringing back Victoria Saxton, Bria Bio, Zaya Cook, along with a lot of minutes. As Fran Bolivi goes up, and I think the crowd thought maybe she was yeah, going to put that one down. With that unforgettable win in the Final Four against a couple of years ago when Boston missed the the putback. So we look forward to that coming up next Sunday. Stanford plays Cal Poly midweek at home before South Carolina comes to town and what will be a noon local tip. MJ Bruno from Spokane knocking down the three. And the Stanford Cardinal 